Okay, the absolute first step in buying a house is establishing a budget. And a budget is really just simple math. You know, you can go very in-depth and advanced with it, but really it's just simple math. Your goal is to spend less than you make. Now that seems like an easy task, but really it's not. And the reason it's not is we have check cards, credit cards, things that are very, very easy to use to spend on a consistent basis. So really it's an awareness of of what you're spending on a monthly or bi-weekly basis is what a budget is. And it's very important when you're buying a house because you want to rein in your spending and get to the point where you know what's coming in and going out. So you're being aware of what you're spending on a consistent basis. Okay, so I've got some great material here from Dave Ramsey to help you out with this. Uh, just grab this off of his site and I'm gonna run you through this and some advanced stuff. We're gonna start with a very basic stuff and then we're gonna get into the advanced stuff here later. Okay, we'll start with a quick budget. So step one on this is you're just going to write down what you're spending for the month in each of the categories on this sheet. Just download the sheet and write down. If, if you don't know, it's okay. You just want to make a good guess of where you're at. Step two is you want to total all of the categories so you know in each category how much you're spending. Very, very simple. And then step three, you want to add all of the total boxes up and add that number in the category total. So basically, this gives you an idea of what you're spending per month uh, on everything. Okay, so here's the budget. Charity, savings, housing, utilities, food, clothing, transportation, and personal. So just mark what you're spending in each one of those categories, and then at the bottom, total it all up and total it all up in each category. Very, very simple. Okay, so this next form is the monthly cash flow plan. And the goal here is to figure out what you're spending as opposed to what you're bringing in. So step one, you're going to put in your t monthly take-home pay. That's what you're taking away from your check on a monthly basis. That's step one. Then step two, within each category, you're going to start and work your way down and fill out all of the information on it. So watching the percentages, you want to put together a plan of what you can spend. For me, groceries and restaurants are always budget busters for me. So when I put a plan into place that I'm going to spend a certain amount of money for groceries and a certain amount of money for restaurants every month, every single time I do it, I save at least double of what I would have spent if I would not have put a goal in place of what I was going to spend. So restaurants and groceries are a big, big budget buster. Okay, then on step three, on step three you're going to enter your take home pay and then you're going to enter in all the categories for everything you're spending and then your goal is to zero this out. So you want to make sure that you're allocating everything to spending and of course putting some of that into savings. Now here's the important part on step four. You want to put what you've actually spent in the in the column H as opposed to what you've budgeted. Now understand this is going to be hard at first and you'll go over. It's okay. You're becoming aware of what you're spending which is extremely important. So it's a consistent action of putting that information into that column every single month. So that's step four. So here's what it looks like. Here's your budgeted item. You sit down at the beginning of the month and plan your budget. Okay, I'm going to give the church 10%. I'm going to save this amount of money this month. I'm going to put, I'm going to spend this amount of money on groceries. I'm going to spend this amount of money on the kids' closing. I'm going to put this amount of money in gas and oil and medical and everything. Okay, so you put what you want to spend at the beginning of the month and then as you go through the month, when you finish it, you write down exactly what you spent and then you compare the two at the end. And here's page two of that. Insurance, personal, recreation. Okay, debts. This is where you want to really get deep into what your debts are and what you're spending on them. 
So you're going to put in all your debts right here. And we'll go into this in future how to, how to eliminate those. So once you're done, total them all up, add in that. And remember, you want to zero out at the end of the month so you're not spending too much money or you're not wasting any money as well. So your goal is to put money into debts first and then saving second if you've got a bunch of debt. Okay, now, irregular income. This is important if you have a commission job or something that doesn't pay the exact same amount per month. So you can read through this one, but it's the same type of cash flow plan, but if you, if you receive an extra amount of income, you're going to move it forward so you don't waste it in the interim. And if you receive less in one month period, or then you're going to be able to draw from the other months that you had better income. So here's what that looks like. Okay, so now what is the goal here? Why are we doing this? Why are we budgeting? Why are we becoming aware of what we're spending? And here's the answer. Because we want to retire wealthy. Plain and simple. We don't want to do like 99% of the rest of Americans and retire extremely poor. And that's actually not difficult to do because of the power of compound interest over time. So let's say you start with $30,000 in your 401k or something like that, and you pay off all your debts. And you get to the point where you can spend $300 a month in investments. Your rate of return is 12, and if yours is not, my financial planner can definitely help you out with uh, getting a higher rate of return. And you want to get to a million dollars. That's your goal. Now, at the rate of of 12% uh, and putting just $300 extra in a month and of course you can find that $300 from what you're spending I actually have spent that in a month going out to eat too much in 23 years you can save a million dollars and that's pretty amazing and the reason is it's the power of compound interest over time now look what happens if we're saving less let's take that down to a hundred it goes to 27 years now, look what happens if we start with less money. The time goes up dramatically. So time is your friend, okay? So that's why we're doing this. We're looking at what you're spending on a consistent basis so you can retire wealthy. Now, let's go into what you should be spending on a consistent basis. Okay, here are the recommended percentages for what you want to spend um, on your new house, and all of your debts and your bills. And charitable gifts, 10 to 15%. You want to save between 5 and 10%. I personally think that this should be higher if you're older and, uh, and normal if you're younger. Because if you're older, you've lost that time and you need to save faster. I've maxed out my 401ks uh, because I had some problems in the past and uh, went through a mortgage crash. And at this point, I've just saving as much as I possibly can toward my retirement. So I've maxed out my 401ks, and I really suggest that you do the same. Okay, and uh, housing, you want to be between 25 and 35% of your gross income, or your uh, net income. Utilities, 5 to 10%. Food, here's an important one, between 5 and 15%. We all can easily go over that, but there's some easy ways to save money on food as well. Transportation, about 10 to 15 percent. Clothing, 2 to 7 percent. Medical, 5 to 10. And personal, 5 to 10. Okay, if you stay with these recommended percentages, you will easily retire rich. So there you go. Just download all of this information and start working on it. And then once you get all your percentages, you can figure out exactly what you want to spend per month. On